What is up, my new of M friends? Today, we're gonna to be talking about code folding, which is expanding and collapsing parts of the code in your editor, which of course is NeoVim. And that should allow you to see exactly what's going on and get right to the code that you need to modify. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. My name's Andrew. I'm a software engineering manager who loves to constantly improve and share my tools, tips, and tricks for you to improve along with me. If you like NeoVim, you might consider subscribing. And if you like the content, hit that like button. Let's jump into code folding. To get started, I'm gonna show you basically in VS Code what code folding is, and then we'll implement that and configure that inside of NeoVim. So if you hover over some of this stuff with your mouse, which you know VS Code uses a ton of mouse stuff, then you can expand and collapse using these little arrows and get some collapsing behavior to very quickly see exactly what's going on. There's some keyboard shortcuts, but I won't get into that here. I really just wanted to show you the functionality that you're probably used to in other editors. There's six fold methods that I'm gonna to cover today. Manual, indent, marker, expression, syntax, and diff. Anytime you wanna set folds yourself, you're gonna to have to set the fold method to manual. Then if you want to set folds by the indent level, which means how far they are indented, you're gonna use indent. Marker uses a special character that you can override, but you probably shouldn't. Expression has been used in the past with some tree sitter stuff, which I'll show you in the video. Syntax uses your syntax highlighting. And then diff is used whenever you're diffing two files. I'm gonna be using a fresh install of Kickstart InVim. I'll put a link to that in the description. If if you haven't used that before. Also, if you want to use different distributions, you can use the invim app variable, which again, I'll put a description in the link. Inside of Kickstart, we don't really have a whole lot of plugins outside of Telescope and some other base configurations. So if we wanted to set our fold method, we can say set fold method equals to manual, and this should set it to manual for us. We can check that it's set to that by doing something very similar, essentially not setting it equal to anything, and we should see that it is indeed set to manual. Another setting that we wanna have on is to see our folds on the left-hand side in a column. To do this, we set fold column equal to one. So we'll do set fold column and equal to one. This should show on the left-hand side, and right now we don't have any folds, so let's create one. We're in manual mode, and so if we highlight some text and then hit ZF, that should fold these code lines for us. If we want to expand them, we can hit ZO, that will open them, and then ZC will close them again. What I like to do is use ZA, which is to toggle. So you need ZA to open and ZA to close. If we expand our fold here and we actually create another fold within it, then we can hit ZF to create another fold. And if we hit ZA, you can see this little two on the left-hand side, and that shows us that we have another fold within this larger fold. And we can close the outer one, toggle it with ZA, or close the inner one, toggle that one with ZA, and collapse the whole thing again doing this way. If we wanna delete all the folds recursively under our cursor, then we can do Z and capital D, and that will delete all of them. You see we don't have any more. If I try to do ZA, it says I have no fold found. If I just want to do one level, I can do ZF again, open this up, highlight these, ZF again. And if I wanted to delete only the inner fold, I can do ZD. And you can see I still have this outer fold enabled. Let's change our fold method to indent. So to do that, we do fold method and we set that to indent. Now you can see all of the things that are indented within this function here are already collapsed. I can expand it with ZA, and you see I get all these folds for free. So I can open them up, close them. I get all these different foldings for free because of the fold method of indent. This is a really good fallback. I'll show you a little bit later when we're configuring a plugin to have indent as your fallback because it gets a lot of the things for free. Let's set our next fold method, which is marker. So to do that, we do set fold method to marker and this takes a special set of characters the default is uh let's talk fold is three curlies a comma and three curlies this way this is called the fold marker and so if we delete this and add some text in here and we do a fold then it folds all this text for us it's recommended to not change the default for the marker, but certainly you can with a set fold marker and some other character set. So if we wanted to do that, we'd do set fold marker, and we would do something like some angle brackets, 
and that would change this. We could change these again to these angle brackets. And we would get the fold functionality that way. This next fold method, I actually couldn't get to work in NeoVim, so we're going to show it off in Vim instead. So if we set fold method equal to syntax, then we can see that all these lines are closed based on our syntax files and our syntax highlighting. And this kind of works for the most part. I think it doesn't work as well as an LSP or tree sitter but certainly something that's pretty nice. And so I'll show you how to configure those with a plugin later on in the video. The next fold method I wanna talk about is expression. From here, you can set a custom regex expression, do nice formatting and collapsing that way. A lot of times people will use InVim tree sitter, which is the example I'm gonna show you today. So we need to set a few other things. So let's set fold level to be 20. So we understand like how deep we want to have our folds go and whenever they want to show. We'll set the fold method, like I just mentioned, to expression. And then the last thing is you need to have tree sitter for this one to, to actually work, but let's do fold expression and in Vim tree sitter and then fold expression, call that function. And then we should see some folds that actually show up here. So you can see I can expand and collapse this. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see some other folds. So this is giving me all these nice folds using tree sitter and the syntax highlighting there from the expression function that we just called. The very last code fold method I want to talk about is the diff fold method. And this is actually triggered whenever you put Vim into the diff mode. And to do that, you pass it the dash D option. So if we did in Vim dash D and something like this, where we have two files, and if we run this command, then we should see all the things that are the same get collapsed. And so this bottom section here, we don't see any of these 489 lines. We can certainly toggle them and toggle them off. But the things that we're interested in are the differences between the two. And those are the things that are expanded and open for us. If you're having trouble with folds being either opened or closed whenever you're switching buffers, these couple of configuration options I would recommend. So you might set no fold enable to true, which should keep everything closed and then fold level start to 99. That'll make sure that all your folds will stay open whenever you're switching between those buffers. So check those out if you have a custom configuration, but I'll show you a plugin and some other configuration options here in just a second. If you wanna save your folds into a file so that you can reload them later on after you manually create them, you can use mkview or make view, and that will save them into a file and then to load them again, you just use load view and that will load all your manual folds that you saved. If you want to add your own custom key map for opening and closing folds, then you can do something like this, where I've set minus to closing the fold and plus to opening it. If you want something more intuitive or just like narrowing it down to one key map where you would call a function, I'll leave a link in the description of a video that actually develops a Lua function to toggle this, which I thought was really handy. For me, this is just showing if I do minus, I'll close it. If I do plus, I'll open it. Another thing I'll mention is that your formatter will sometimes remove your manual folds. So heads up on that. If you're using a certain kind of formatter, if you format your file, you may lose your folds. Now I want to show you what I think is a better option and the plugin that I use day in and day out that I really have grown to love. And that's called InVim UFO. This plugin will allow you to use either COC or tree sitter or LSP or some other option to configure how you create folds and do it almost seamlessly and give you a really awesome experience. To install it using LazyVim, you just use this code block here where it's InVim UFO. It has a dependency of this promise async. If you're using Packer, check out the docs that we were just looking at to see how to install it. Now, if we jump over to our InVim UFO Lua file, I created this so that we could have all our config in this section. And you can see I set a few options like the fold column we saw earlier in the video to show that on the left-hand side and then the fold level to show all of our folds more often than not and the fold enable true to also show them. You need to remap the ZR and ZM, which I forgot to cover actually. So if you do ZM, that will close all the folds in your entire file. And then if you do ZR to reveal, then you can see all the folds and see everything like you normally would. I also have this really awesome function. So if I have a fold collapsed, I can do ZK and I can peek into the fold and see exactly what's going on there. Really handy and one of the really useful features of UFO. From the documentation, 
There's different ways to configure your provider. So for me, I was using TreeSitter, but I switched to using LSP. It gives you a little bit better code folding to know where the functions are and the syntax for the specific language you're working in. So I personally prefer the LSP. And then as a backup, I have indent. That way I can still use code folding if it doesn't know or I don't have an LSP configured for the file type. Now let's see it in action. So I have configured the LSP option and you can see I have a lot more granular options for code folding. So I can collapse this little block here, which actually doesn't show up if you're using the tree setter option. So LSP is a little bit more granular like I mentioned. You can collapse everything again to ZM to minimize everything and ZR to expand or reveal everything. And then down in here, you can see the different functions. It goes pretty deep. Like this one's actually like five deep to be able to close it and open it. I'd recommend using the LSP. If you have any other plugins that you're using that are doing code folding for you that you want me to cover in future videos, leave a comment below and I'll check it out so that I can learn more about it and hopefully share that knowledge with you. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching and consider liking and subscribing. And if you have other NeoVim content that you want me to cover, definitely share that in the comments. And I'll see you in my next NeoVim video. Thanks again.